Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Black Wealth Renaissance Podcast. Your boy, David Bella, one-fourth of the Black Wealth Renaissance, checking in with my co-host. Fellas, how y'all feeling? What up? It's your boy, Jalen, checking in. Feeling great. Man, got some great energy going on this Saturday. Lovely, lovely, lovely. How, how the rest of the crew doing? Man, what's good? What's good? It's your boy, Jerry, checking in, man. I can't complain, man. It's a good Saturday, man. It's... Everything rolling good for me. I'm ready to get into this episode, though, man. Yeah, buddy, man. It's about to be another fire <laughs> episode, man. It's another one. Been in the tuck for a minute. Been in the in the, the road for a minute. Got a good brother of ours that we met uh, via Instagram on live. He goes by Renaissance125. So you know we had to already connect with him. Oh, yeah. My brother out of Chicago, Andre Hayes. Andre, how you doing, bro? Hey, what's going on, fellas? I'm doing great. I appreciate y'all for having me on this afternoon. Hey, man, thank you for coming on, bro. We can't wait to get this show started. So we're just going to jump right on into it, my brother. Can you just tell the people, you know, how'd you get started into your real estate journey? Um, my real estate journey started with a program called NACA. Um, that's Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America. And um, I was told about NACA by a mentor of mine, a big sister of mine, um, a broker that I used to work under when I was um, first trying to learn about real estate and get into real estate. Um, I had been working for a while. I had saved up some money and I had reached out to her like, hey, you know, I'm ready to buy me a house. I got some money saved up. I'm ready to go ahead and take that leap. And she was like, um, you probably shouldn't buy no house. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? She was just like, you young. Um, you're in a situation where you can like really put yourself ahead if you consider getting yourself a multi-unit. And the crazy thing was that was confirmation for me because I had just finished reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad for the first time. You know what I mean? And that was just like, ding, 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 ding. This is really what you need to do. You know what I mean? And um, she was like, how much money you got saved up? And I'm like, you know, about ten, eleven thousand dollars or whatever. And she was like, um, oh, perfect. She was like, you got any debt or whatever in your name? I'm like, you know, I got my car note and little stuff. She was like, all right, cool. Go to this program, you know, call NAC. I went to the website, sign up for the little seminar that they have or whatever. So I went to one of the churches on a Saturday morning. And um, just all of the information that they were giving and that they were saying, it just sounded so unreal, like no money down, lowest interest rate in the country. Um, we pay for your clothes and cars. You don't have to pay your attorney. You don't have to pay for your agent. We'll provide you with an agent if you don't have one. Just all of these beneficial things to where as a first time homeowner wouldn't even know that you had to, you know, have an order for you to get a property. You know what I mean? They had this stuff lined up for you and pretty much walking you through the door uh, by hand. And um, that day I signed up, I signed up to meet with my mortgage counselor and me and him ended up becoming really, really cool. His name is Jamil. And um, from day one, Jamil just was giving me the game because when I walked in, he's noticed that I had on some Jordans and he was like, man, my son loved Jordans or whatever. And that's how the conversation got started. And I was like, man, I collect sneakers or whatever the case may be. And we just started talking and I was telling him what, what my goals were. And I'm like, man, you know, I want to be a, you know, a multi-unit real estate investor. And um, this is going to be my first property. And at the time I had my girl with me or whatever. And he was like, well, listen, you're a young black man. I like you. You thinking right. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the game y'all plan on like being together and like you know what i mean sticking this thing out i was like shit that's you know what it's looking like yeah you know what i mean and um he was like well listen he was like you get your property you know what i mean and you bring her back you know what i mean once you get your property before y'all get married you know what i mean make sure she's straight or whatever with her finances and all that stuff and y'all double back and y'all get a second property and then y'all get married and y'all merge everything together and after y'all get married and merge everything together Y'all can then go get y'all single family home because y'all got hella income, hella equity, whatever y'all need to go and put down on a single family home without it even being a stressful situation at all. And um, that was probably some of the best advice anybody had ever given me. You know what I mean? And um, Shout out Jamil. Yeah, for real. And um, I went ahead with my first property. We went ahead and did it. I, um, I closed on a brick four unit in the nice Chicago suburb right outside of the city, man. Beautiful amenities, access to the city on the train, the expressway, Walmart, restaurants, churches, all in the area, uh, good schools in the area, all of these things. And when I bought it, the building wasn't all the way fixed, fixed up yet. So I had like a lot of room to put in some sweat equity and build up a lot of equity in it. But I'll get to that in a second. So, I closed on the property with a 2.5% interest rate with NACA. 
And the starter interest rate was 3.5. And at the time, that was extremely low. Right now, I think NACA's interest rates, I'm looking at their website, and it says 3.1 right now. So they're offering a lower interest rate than what I got shit five years ago, which is amazing. So this is a great time to go and look for a property if you're in the, um, if you're in the market for that. So like I said, in addition to me getting a, a low interest rate, I was able to buy the interest rate down because they give you the option to buy the interest rate down lower so you can get a lower mortgage payment if you want to, which is amazing. They allow you to take up to um, 10, I think it's um, 10 percent back from the seller. You know what I mean? So if your property 300,000, you can get up to 30 grand back from the seller, which you can help with, you know, buying the mortgage down, closing costs, all of those different things. So these are all things that I take advantage of. I got money back from the seller. I had my own money saved up and the building didn't require a lot of work because the apartment that I was going to move in was already fixed up and just up to date and ready to go. And the other three units was filled. So, and generating income already. So the day that I closed, I got the keys. I walked away from the closing table. Like I say, no money now, none of that. Everybody got their money. They was happy. I got a check for $5,000. So I walked away with all of the money that I saved the 10, 12 grand that I told y'all I had initially on top of what I saved while I was going through the program. And I walked away from the closing table with five grand. And I closed at the end of the month, which was May 29th, May 30th. I started getting rent checks the next day from all three units because everybody paid their rent on time. Imagine oh. the feeling like that. Hold up, hold mm. up. Hold That's up. hard. I see why you say this shit don't sound real, bro. This shit sound bro. unreal, bro. Like, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't sound real to people when I tell them because they like, how you do it? How you do it? And I'm like, it's not just like you just can't walk up dead ass broke. Of course, you got to have your shit together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You got to have your, your credit. You got to be able to afford a home. Yeah, of course, you got to be able to afford a home and be able to go through the process of home buying because they're going to put you through the same process that any other bank or whoever, lender or whoever would. But... It's just they're way more nicer and helpful than other other people gonna shut the door in your face. Not gonna be like, nah, go do this, 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 and this, and then come back. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when I first went in, I wasn't all the way ready. I had a couple of bills, um, like you know, sprint bills or something like that, negative sprint bill. Like I said, I had to pay my car note off. And um, some little things. So I encourage people, if they do go to the NACA program, they go, do go through the NACA program, go in ready to rock and roll. That'll help expedite your process you know what mm-hmm. i mean a lot of people you hear them complain about NACA, like oh man they just drag you along it take too long they do this 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 and this and this this this, and this but that's because most times when people go in they're not ready they just hear this oh no money down you can get a multi-unit property through NACA. you can do all they just hear the benefits of it but mm-hmm. they don't really look and consider like okay what do i need to do on my end so that i can take full advantage of every last one of these benefits you know what I mean? And that's a that's a major issue that I see with a lot of people. And also, I would encourage a lot of people to not try and do a rehab loan with NACA. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's not going to be a super duper easy process. And I know because on my second property, I tried to do a rehab loan with NACA. And it just was a headache. It kept going like bad. The appraisals wasn't coming back the right way. It was just a big headache. So a 203K loan, I wouldn't suggest trying to do it with NACA. I would suggest what you do with NACA is go and try and find you something that's already occupied, generating income, move in and fix it up as you go, which is what I would suggest with anything because you're already walking into income and you have the option to build up equity on your own at your own pace as you're comfortable doing. And um, as far as the second property, now this was the lit because so mind you, remember all of that money that I told y'all that I walked away from the closing table with, right? Mm-hmm. I had been, like I say, studying, you know, real estate, the stock market, all of these different things before I even bought my first property. So I'd seen, I was sitting on all of this cash, just liquid as hell on top of me generating monthly income from the property. Like, I'm going to go put this shit in the stock market. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, ding, 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 ding. Because I'm like, what am I going to do with all of this money? I'm not like, just leave it in the bank. I'm, gonna, I'm not definitely not going to put it in the bank. Right. I'm going to put this shit in the stock market. So I jumped immediately right into the stock market. Um, uh, S&P 500, um, sector ETFs, energy ETFs, healthcare ETFs, technology ETFs, Apple stock, um, dividend paying um funds just like you know what i mean just just really diversifying where i was putting my money and shit up because i had been reading kiplinger's magazine and warren buffett books and just all of these different things that told me what to do 
when you do decide to get in the stock market. And at the time that I got in the stock market, 2015, stock market was bussing. The stock market was bussing. So from 2015 up until 2018, I turned like 16 grand into like $27,000 because yeah. what I ended up doing was pulling that money so that we can get the second property. So mm -hmm. now this is the story with the second property. So we doubled back with my girl at the time. And this process was way harder than my process, y'all. When I tell y'all, we looked at probably 10 different properties, had probably five different contracts. We almost lost $10,000 in earnest money. Like, it was just like, like, we got tested, we got tried, like, we got drugged through the mud with this second property, though. But at the end of the story, y'all gonna understand why I was worth it. So, like, we went through all of these different things, man. And we were looking in these particular neighborhoods where the properties were 300, 400 grand. You know what I mean? We were just trying to max out with the number that NACA told us was the max. And that's another note, if you're listening to this, whatever they tell you the max is with NACA, that is not the max. Like, it's not. Like, whatever the rents are generating on a property, that will determine the max that you can afford on a property, not what they tell you the max is. So don't listen to that shit. So when they tell you your max is $400,000, Go and find you something that's $850,000. As long as the rent can, uh, you know what I'm saying, cover that mortgage mm -hmm. and what you make can cover that, you can get that. Like, so don't ever limit yourself. You know what I mean? And I learned this through this process. So like I said, we was looking for whatever they saying the limit was, four units for three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. Man, every deal went south. Every deal went south. Every deal went south. Like I say, one deal, we almost lost $10,000 in earnest money, but it just so happens that a few days before the contract was up, and we almost lost it because we couldn't get the appraisal to go through. The shit just wouldn't appraise out. Like no matter what we did, no matter how we worked the numbers, it just would not appraise out. And they was holding on to our earnest money. And um, we was just sick. So maybe like a week, a few days before the contract was up, bro, like, uh, and, and I hate to say this, but it had to be God, somebody broke into the property, bro, and stole all of the pipes and shit out of the property, and that made the contract null and void because mm. the property was damaged. So we got all our bread back, and we was able to start looking again. So, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at this point, we go back into the mortgage office, and it's this girl up in there, and I hear her talking to my mortgage counselor about how she looking for a property that's $650,000. When I heard that the limit was only $434,000, I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I go in after her, and I'm like, Jamil, what's up? And he's like, um, what's up? I'm like, what's she talking about? She can find a property for $650,000. He's like, yeah, she got one under contract. I'm like, so why this whole time I've been thinking that you could only get one for $450,000? He was like, man, I don't know. I'm sorry. Da, 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 all that shit. I should have told you. I'm like, well, listen, it's up from here. Like, I'm going to start looking in Logan Square, Wicker Park, Bucktown. These are like the high-end areas where like the young rich people is living at in Chicago mm -hmm. right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, I'm going to start going up north. And he was like, all right, if you find something, let me know. And from there, man, the journey went on for million-dollar multi-units, man. And the first one we looked at, it was cool. We put an offer in on it. We got beat out. The second one, this is the craziest shit in the world. We put an offer on it. The people told us no, walked away from us. We went and looked at two or three properties. Then we looked at the one that we live in now that we found, the second one. We got a contract on this property, right? Mm -hmm. And then the people from the property who told us no to our offer, they called us back and said, you know what, we want to take y'all offer. So now we had to decide, like, oh, man, which one we want. So the difference in properties were that one was a three unit. It was generating beautiful amounts of rent. The price on it was kind of high, but they was going to give us a decent amount of money back. And the one that we're in now that we ended up getting, it was a four unit. It was a three unit building in the front and a big, beautiful coach house in the back, like big, beautiful coach house where you can like see the city skyline, all of these things and the, and the house is like decked the fuck out, it's amazing. So this is considered a four unit. So this is a building in the front and a house in the back on the same lot. Hmm. So I'm just like, shit, make it make sense. Like, let's go for the one that got the house on the lot. <laughs> like that just, that just makes sense to me. So that's the one we ended up going after. That's the one we ended up getting. 
And with this deal, we had to come off a whole lot of cash. We had to get the seller to work with us and everything played out. So the seller had to give us a big chunk of cash, which we used to buy the interest rate down to 0.8%, which is what made the mortgage affordable. Again, yeah, y'all heard that right. 0.8% interest rate, boy, on a million dollars. <laughs> you hear me? Let them know. I'm out here doing that shit. That's a 0.8% interest rate on a million dollar property. You heard? Yeah. Like, God, NACA did that. So anybody telling you anything bad about NACA, tell them get the fuck on. <laughs> NACA did that for us. Let them know. As long as the cash flow justified. As long going as it justified, you legit. So dude gave us the money back and we needed to come up with 70 grand on our own. So I had some bread. She had saved up her 20 grand that she needed to save up. And then I'm like, man, where am I going to get the rest of the money from? Oh, yeah, you got $25,000 in the stock market that you done profited shit. 13 grand from, go ahead and pull that. And I pull all of that out. No fees, no penalties. When you got a cold ass account, they write that shit up like bing, 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 bing. <laughs> you up out of there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't had no fees, no penalties on me pulling anything out of my, you know what I mean, stocks, uh, Roth IRA, none of that. So, man, we cashed out on that deal, bro. And we made two deals, $1.4 million worth of assets with $70,000 of our own money. That is shit. $1.23 million worth of equity we sitting on, pretty much. Hey. Yeah. On top of the shit going up. You know what I'm saying? It's not going down because I'm adding value to the properties again. Like, keep in mind, I'm I'm upgrading as people moving out and, you know, fixing on roofs and all of these different things. And I'm going to put all of this stuff on my Instagram, too, because I'm starting to do a lot more um, video and just, like, visual insight of, like, what it takes to be a landlord and all of the different things you're going to have to deal with and go through as a landlord. And, um, yeah, I'm building equity in these places, man. This shit is skyrocketing in value because of the neighborhoods that they're in. So, the equity is going to keep going up. And on top of that, man, both of these motherfuckers is cash flowing. Like, I'm not spending no money out of my pocket for them. They're taking care of themselves. And the one four unit, the first four unit, I'm making profit on that because somebody moved in the one that I live in. It's my best friend. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. still, like, I had to protect the asset by putting somebody in there that I knew because now I could tell you, like, yeah, you ain't supposed to move out. But get the fuck out of here. Y'all ain't got, like, no security team as... <laughs> I was just about to ask you about that. <laughs> doors, like, yo, who uh who live here right now? Like, as long as the mortgage is getting paid, they don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? And after you close, you're not even really dealing with NACA no more. You're just dealing with your bank. Like, so if you got Citibank, Bank of America, that's who they deal with as far as the financing goes with NACA, Citibank and Bank of America. Hmm. So they definitely not sending no motherfuckers out knocking on your doors, motherfucking driving past your house, seeing if you still live there, checking the mailbox to see if your name on it, or any of that type of stuff. As long as you're paying your mortgage so all of this stuff about you got to live that forever and all that it's not necessarily true if you do things the right way don't be not paying your mortgage moving out doing a whole bunch of dumb shit letting motherfuckers sell dope out your building and all that type of shit you know what i'm saying but when you do things the right way handle your business the right way man it's it's ways around everything because i man i sure was just about to ask you about that with that knack and stuff because i was like when you said you left out that first one and y'all did the second one, I was like, okay, so you did NACA with your first property under your ID, then your girl did it under her ID. Yeah. Then, like, when you moved out, I was wondering if you had to refinance. I ain't have to redo nothing, boy. I moved out, put my name on the mailbox with my best friend name on the mailbox, like, we roommates. And shit, that's just what it is, you know what I'm saying? I put my name on a deed over here because it couldn't be on the mortgage because I already got a mortgage with NACA or whatever, but I put it on a deed, which is what really matters because if something happened to her, it's going to deed right over to me. And, you know, we slid everything under the business, Renaissance Capital Holdings and shit. It's up from there, bro. Like, we pretty much at this point starting to look for a single family home where we can move out of these and just generate cash flow. And like I say, I... It's crazy the way real estate didn't free me up, y'all. Like, cause I was working shit like 50 hour weeks and shit like that just to, you know what I mean, save up the money and all of what that. You, stuff. What you was doing before that anyway, my brother? Man, bro, that shit was trash, bro. Telemarketing, sitting in the cubicle, calling motherfuckers, trying to get them to go to EIU <laughs> and Colorado Tech and shit like that. Like, <laughs> like so, you know, so after that, you, you just started like reading them books and just educating them. I was reading yourself. them in the cubicles. I was on the cubicles reading these. So I used to rap initially. And um, I got to a certain age. I'm like, man, this shit ain't doing nothing for me. This shit look cool. You know, you shooting videos and stuff like that, but you ain't 
this shit ain't paying no dividends. Like, and I had to just like step away from that shit and really like go on a like a, a individual journey for myself and like figure out like what it was that God really wanted me to do in my life. You know what I mean? Like, okay, God, what's my calling out here for real? Because out here I'm really just like purposeless. I want to rap and do all of this stuff and get money for all the wrong reasons right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And once I stopped rapping, I started picking up books again because I've always been smart. When I was in school, when I was in college, I was on a dingy list. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I just had to really tap back into my intelligence and who I really was. And I had to look up like, okay, you can step away from music because you see this isn't working and this isn't for you. But you don't have to give up on your goal of being wealthy, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I started to look up like, man, how are people out here getting wealthy outside of sports and entertainment? Because we as Black people only feel like sports and entertainment will get us to where we want to go. But that's not necessarily true. If we start young and we, you know what I mean, start instilling these financial principles and all of these different things at, you know, 10, 12, 13 years old, as opposed to us getting in when we 27, 28, 29, man, we can be up already, but mm-hmm. it, it just got to start in the right space and in the right place. You know what I mean? And I feel like our generation is really like taking a step forward and like, being that group of people that's gonna be like, nah, we ain't gonna be walking around a pole and fucked up. You know what I mean? And I talk to my kids about finance and all of these things all the time because I feel like it's extremely important to you know on top of school and all of that, which is cool. Like, man, let your kids know about credit. Let your kids know about taxes. Let your kids know about the benefits of starting their own business, even mm-hmm. if they do want to work. Just let them know, man, have something for yourself on the side. So just in case, and use this pandemic as an example. Like you see what's happening, all of these people out of work, freaking out, panicking. If you got your own thing, that ain't even nothing you necessarily got to worry about. You know what I mean? And exactly. You can use examples like that and, and help your kids understand what's going on right now. And that, I think that's really what the, the Renaissance is all about, honestly. Like, making sure that this education, because I think that's the thing that's really sparking everything. We get in the education, the understanding, like... The information, Like, man. bro, this is not the wave, like... Yeah, like, this we've been business doing owner this and investor shit, this is where it's at. Yeah, we've been, like like he said, we've been trying to rap, we've been playing sports, we've been fighting, we've been doing all of this for so long. Uh, but we still coming out on the short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even when you're doing that, athletes going broke, entertainers going broke because they ain't paying their taxes, like all of this wild ass shit. Like, man, you want me to take the part? They still employees. Yep, they getting tax. Fit. They taking fifty percent of their profits. Man, that's crazy, ain't it? That's crazy, bro. Like, and when you own the business, how much they taking, my brother? Bro, I got three companies. Everything I do is a write off. Like, mm. and, and it's just like. I, I can't remember when the last time I had to pay a, a tax or on anything outside of stuff about the grocery store. You know what I'm saying? Like my clothes, my shoes, like all of that stuff, bro. Like, so I have a TV show and I have, and I run my TV show through my media company. You know what I mean? So, man, clothes, shoes, anything budget. that's just, it's all in the budget. It's a write-off, bro. Like everything. Like I even, so for me, bro, like I'm such a hustler out here. I even go do a couple of Instacart orders every week so I can use like my car. Like, like I got a high ass car note, so I got a Jag, right? So I'll go do a couple of Instacart orders every week just so I can put my car note, my gas mileage, all of that shit as a write-off in my businesses and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Cause Instacart give you a 1099. So like all of the, I, I haven't paid taxes or anything. Like, so I'm saying like, it's so much like free, just every money free. Just <laughs> so, out here, bro, that people don't even know about man. Like, so how often you putting your car on like the Instacart? Cause that, that's a cool uh, flex. I do. I do. I do Instacart probably man, two or three days out the week. And I do like two orders at a time. I do it. So I make sure I get paid like maybe $200 a day a week. You know what I mean? Something like that. To whereas it shows as income, and they gonna send me a 1099 for it, and my accountant gonna do what she gonna do as far as the car mileage, the gas, any repairs that I get on my car. Like, it's just crazy that, like, bro, like I'm from the south side of Chicago, the projects. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up poor as shit. You know what I'm saying? I was raised in Maywood, which was another, you know what I mean, poor town in the suburbs and Broadview, and um. Like, I ain't had shit. Ain't nobody teach me financial literacy or any of that, man. So for me to be living my life like how I'm living it now, sometimes I wake up in, like, total fucking amazement. Like, <laughs> I can't believe this shit, you know? <laughs> like, Hey, man, it's a blessing, that gotta be That got to be a hard feeling, though, especially, like, going from where you had started with the, like, telemarketing, I don't even really like this job, yeah. to, like, bro, now 
current day, okay, I've educated myself. I understand what's going on with the tax write-offs and all this stuff. Bro, my clothes are right off. Like, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> Everything, bro. Like, and when you get that understanding, it's just like, y'all y'all seen the movie Limitless before? Like, you start feeling yeah. like that, bro. Like, you just start moving and thinking, like, in other ways. Like, your mind is so free. Like I say, this shit has freed me up to where it's, I done took one of Todd Capital courses, bro, and I done started making money with trading stock options. I ain't know shit about no stock options, nigga. Like, the fuck <laughs> stock options? I knew the stock market and buying shares, but stock options, nigga? Like, I done made $7,000 in a 10-day time frame just because I educated myself and I had the time to. Like, it was a $60 investment, and that shit then turned itself around one hundred thousand percent. You know what I mean? And look, this is, you- like, this shit freed me up to do this shit, bro. It's interesting that you mention that too, though, because like that's one of the main things that people like consistently and they'll probably hear this episode and say like, well, I don't have the time to be able to read all the books and do the stuff that he did. But it's like you start somewhere. And then I was in my cubicle, boy, the supervisor was coming over there like, boy, put that book down. Like I was leaving people on voicemails and all type of shit trying to attain this information. Like I wasn't giving a fuck, bro. Like, like I was just in there reckless as hell. Like I'm sitting in my cubicle, a uh, person to be on the phone. Like, hello, 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 y'all. Just call me. I'll be sitting there read motherfucking uh the seven habits of highly effective people. And shit. Like, <laughs> supervisor come over and tap me on my shoulder. Like you don't hit him on the phone. I'm like, oh my bad. And he put this book down. Like and this got coworkers and people who can vouch for that. People who like, man, I remember when Drew was reading them book. And now, bro, out here like buying up real estate in the highest end areas in the city and just like things that you wouldn't even think of when he was working in this damn hell hole. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey man, oh, that, you that's the time to educate yourself. Yeah, and I and I, and I and when I did it, and when I did it, like man, I went in like I went in like stupid hard. Like I would buy like go on Amazon and buy like six or seven books at a time, like to make sure that I would just like would never like run out of stuff to keep informing myself. And then probably after about a year and a half, two years of like just information and education, it was like, all right, nigga, you all this shit starting to repeat itself. It's starting to be redundant. Now it's time to go out and take action. You know everything you need to do. This is the part that really like makes or breaks people you got the information are you gonna leak or are you gonna stand here and be talking about what you know you know what i'm saying real shit <laughs> like, like yeah, so it was like it was time for me to leap so man I, like i said i called my sister she put me in line I, I just i just followed the steps that i was given you know what i'm saying when you've mm-hmm. got mentors you got good people in your life and people giving you good information take that shit everything and i say this all the time i'll be putting this on y'all um, lives and everything everything is not a fucking scam like you know what i'm saying like <laughs> tell them man Everything is not a fucking scam, man. Yeah, some things do sound too good to be true. But at the end of the day, man, if there's no real risk involved in that shit, the least you can do is go seek out the information and find out if it's legit. Mm. You know what and, I mean? And like, that's that's the biggest thing that I think that our people don't understand. Bro, if you hear about it, go look it up. Go yeah. Google it. Like, yeah. you can tell if somebody is lying to you or not. Like, yeah. bro, you, last night on the live, he said it. He was like, I'm going to believe you until I go look it up for myself because you seem to be an expert in what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Absolutely. Until I go look it up and go find this information, just go find your credible source. Find your credible source. Don't find no bullshit-ass site that look like it's all <laughs> fucked up. Like, actually go find you some Investopedia, something, Yahoo Finance. like BlackWalkerInTheSons.com. Like, things are things that I use, bro. Like I said, I started small with simple stuff like Investopedia, Kiplinger's magazine. So I was I was reading about terms that I didn't even understand. Mm-hmm. Yields and, you know what I mean? Stocks and bonds. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? ETF and what the fuck is a fiduciary? fiduciary and like, you know what I'm saying? All these different things. Uh-huh. I didn't understand. I would go and Google it and Google would break that shit down and give me, oh, well, a fiduciary is somebody who just got your financial best interest in mind. Oh, that's it? Why the fuck is it this fancy ass word then? Like, man, <laughs> like just you know just simple shit like that bro and when i started going to seek this information and finding this stuff like yo i can really do this shit because it's not hard it's just about putting in the time to learn this shit just like with anything else just like and, 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 I, and i've said this before man you can't skip out on putting in your ten thousand hours bro like on mm, day, you gotta put the fucking work in and and thinking that some shit gonna be simple because you seeing somebody else's result is a fucking complete formula for failure. A lot of people see somebody else's result and be like, yeah, I want that. And that's what I want right now. But you don't see the fucking work that they put in and things they had to go through, all of the dedication that was involved in getting this result that you're seeing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This is just their 
their celebration time right now. You know what I mean? They celebrating their hard work and you seeing that and you getting turned up off that, which you should, but don't try to skip the part when you got to go and do the hard work too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all, man, so, that just, that's, 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 no, I like that conversation because people really, really hate it, bro. Like, I, I just got I a new term it. though, bro. What would you say? Instead of bandwagon fans, bandwagon business people son. Oh, they just wanna, yeah they, they just, just wanted they come off it. of the in off of the energy bro because you you'll see a lot of teams they win a championship now all of a sudden you a fan of this team right but you also see this person getting this money with this certain type of hustle with this certain type of thing now you want to go oh i do this i do that since when yeah. you was just doing this last week yeah and it's like and, and, and even with that like if you're gonna do that do it the right way so for me like I was just telling y'all, like I took the options class that Todd threw out there, right? But it took a long time for me to take it. I had to do a lot of research. I had to see a lot of people winning with that shit. On top of, I had to create systems first, like my real estate system going, my system with my bullies is going, my system with my media company is going. Now all of these systems are in place and they can run without me necessarily having to be there. Now I can move on and put my time into something else, which is a new system for me. Now I didn't created a system with the options. Now the options are done. Now I can move on to something else. Like, so don't be trying to juggle 20 different things and you don't even understand one thing all the way. So create systems, make sure they work, then move the fuck on to something else. So there's nothing wrong with seeing somebody win and being like, yo, I think I can do that too. I want to do that too. But make sure that whatever you're already working on is done first. Like you're gonna have 50 incomplete projects juggling all of this different stuff, and none of it is gonna end up being done because you just spread yourself way too thin. For sure. Thanks. Andre, bro, I got a question for you. Cause like we, we talk about systems a lot on this show. Mm -hmm. We talk about creating systems for new entrepreneurs. Could you offer some some of our listeners some tips to how you can like get started creating the system? Um, eliminate a lot of the bullshit first. Like you got to figure out like, okay, what's, what's hindering me right now? Like, am I watching too much TV? Am I, you know what I mean? Working too much? Is that what's stopping me from like, what is it that I need to eliminate first so that I can focus on, you know what I mean? What's important? Like that would, that would be the first thing. Like you got to get rid of the eliminate the bullshit start start knocking out the negatives like the first thing when people be like man so how can i start saving money it's like shit just stop like with the bullshit like knock out the netflix knock out the cable bill like simple shit that ain't a need you know what i mean start with yourself start small and then you can start worrying about having some extra money and what to do with it but you you ain't gonna have no money until you start getting rid of all of the expenses that you done took on first and it's the same thing with with what you're asking and I definitely agree with like just cutting out that bullshit. Like we even talk about that like on one of our previous podcasts with like even as far as your timeline, like the shit that you just following, bro. Like you got to cut all of that out the way so you can really just get yourself into a place where you can absorb the good shit. It's crazy that you just said that because about a month ago, I was wondering why I wasn't seeing the stuff on my timeline that I really wanted to see like stuff from you guys and information like that and then i went and looked and i was following three thousand people like you know what i'm saying like with that way the algorithm works and the way that you know what i'm saying instagram show stuff first off you're not even going to see anything from half of those folks mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and second who are y'all? <laughs> like, you know like, why am I even following you? There's nothing on your page that adds value to me. I'm not interested in you kissing your girlfriend on the beach. Like, you know what I'm saying? None of this type of shit, man. I just had got on Instagram and just got into the mode of just following motherfuckers who follow me and just like, I see a, a fly picture inside the explore page or something and I go hit follow because it got some nice colors and just like, Silly shit. And then after a while, once I started understanding, like, okay, this is going to be a platform for me to use for business and different things like that, I had to really, like, start scaling down. At this point, I think I got under 600 people that I'm following. You know what I mean? And most of the people that I'm following, either I know personally, you know what I'm saying, had some type of encounter with, like, whether it was high school or something like that, or it's just, like, people that I'm looking for, like, to add value to me, like, pages like y'all, Todd, Chris Johnson, stuff like that, man. Hey, most dev, bro. I've been in the same mode too. I've been trying to delete a lot of damn people, bro. Yeah, it used to be a lot of ass on my timeline, man. It's hey, just man. Like, you know what I'm saying, like, I why, why? 
That that one right there, that, hey, that's a, it'll that's get you, bro. It'll get you, man. <laughs> that explore page, man. <laughs> like, man, like, bro, you didn't see it's just twenty chicks and twenty different bathing suits. You didn't just scroll past, like, ain't just like, come on, man, just go ahead. Mm-hmm. Too follow much, bro. bro. I'm follow all of them, bro. I ain't thinking about your ass. <laughs> like, but you know, <laughs> but you know, some I, I don't think people really like ever look and assess how much man or how many man hours they really waste looking at that type of stuff or like how much time you'll really spend like yeah. people will get mad when you say like Netflix and stuff like that but it's like bro really sit down and think about the last series that you watched and look at how many hours of that that is and like put that compared to how many hours you spent working on whatever you were supposed to be trying to get done or trying to get out of your situation because you hate your job so much or whatever yeah. like really got to start to assess like damn where am I putting my time I don't have no time where am I putting it yeah, and I and that's one that's the first subject that I speak about on my um show on YouTube called a Renaissance Report, and it was um self evaluation, bro. And um, the number one thing is you have to look and see and understand that you're responsible for whatever situation you're in right now. Whatever you did in the past, that's the shit that got you right here now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you got to be able to look at that, assess that. And if you want something to change, those are the things that you got to change. Otherwise you're going to keep on repeating the same cycle of bullshit over and over and over again. And I don't think people necessarily understand that, that concept of self-evaluation. It's just like having a real ass conversation with yourself. Like, yo, I'm not in a space where I want to be. I'm not doing what I want to be in my life. I'm not happy. I'm good for how much I'm smiling on Instagram, how many drinks I post me drinking, how many flat cars I post me or just any of that shit. I'm not even happy on the inside for real. Like these are real talks that people have to have with themselves and 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 real sit downs that people have to have with themselves, with their friends, their loved ones. And and after you have these conversations with your with your inner circle and yourself. Whoever ain't with that shit, you know what time it is. It's like, all right, yo, I got to get the fuck on from around you. You're a part of the problem. You're a part of the problem. I already know I'm a part of the problem, but now it's time for me to address everything that's outside of me. You know what I'm saying? After I didn't address me. And once you start seeing like who with you and who not, you go and start surrounding yourself with better individuals and people who you want to be like, man, and and like-minded people. And that's and that's, a, and that's such a key and such a gem when it comes to leveling up at a faster pace, man. Like you got to go find people who are doing it into what it is that you want to do outside of that. You're just going to be surrounded by the same, you know what I mean? Broke minded individuals and that's, doing the same broke shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah doing the same broke ass shit. And um, every time you come up with a dope ass bright idea, they're going to shoot that shit down because that's just not how they think. They're not in that mm-hmm. space. Hey, and, man, you, and you, you, people, and you people reach with, the God. And as people, though, the thing is, we 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 think so much with how we feel in our heart. Like that's my cousin, that's my friend. I grew up then, nigga. Like you gotta outgrow people sometimes. Like be logical. It's like so, you rather have this great relationship with your friend who's stagnant and want to stay in the same place and then go and live your best life and get wealthy and have something for your kids and your grandkids and all of these different things. This is what you're choosing right now. Mm-hmm. You go to- <laughs> You gonna limit yourself that way, and then I, I you shouldn't choose to be stagnant for anybody because your growth can inspire them to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that's and that's my main thing. All right, cool. So I'll see you later then. Hopefully, you know what I mean. You'll catch up at some point, but I just gotta go ahead and start running this race that I'm on. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get on this marathon. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. we just sitting right here watching everybody else win. And we on the sideline looking goofy as hell, commentating. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. no, nah, I'm gonna get in the motherfucking game. Like, I can't be out here like just bullshit and steady running my mouth, talking, acting like I'm on something when I'm not. And that's a lot of people's problem. Like, a lot of people have the perception that they're doing something that they're actually not. Like, you know what I'm saying? That you got a nice car, but you got a high ass interest rate on your car. You got a nice home, but you could barely afford the mortgage. It's just like all of these different things. It's just like smoke and mirrors, man. And it's just like, man, we gotta start really putting ourselves in position. So whereas we are real bosses, like, yeah, I'm paying myself and the money that I'm paying myself, I'm paying my mortgage and the money that I'm paying myself is coming from a business that I own, you know what I'm saying? Or an asset that I own. Like, this is the way we got to start thinking as opposed to, yeah, I got a good job and this is what's taking care of everything. Man, fuck that. Because at the end of the day, if that company shut down, if that bitch catch fire, you're going to be the first person they let go of. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're going to be a fellow. <laughs> like, quick. And, and people just got to understand how ownership works and how and the benefits of ownership. And just like, once you start to think like that, it's just no turning back because 
it's like it's like good drugs, man. Growth is like good drugs. It's just like it's an addictive feeling. You are gonna keep on wanting some more, you know? I love that. Like, <laughs> we put. I think we actually put that on the uh, page recently. Like with that dude taking that shot, it was like a shot. It's like mm, I want some more of that. Yeah. But like real, real shit though. Like what you get start to taste it, it get addicting. Like even with like the smallest wins, I know we started when we started with Prosper. Like you see your account grow like by a dollar in a week. I'll be like, hey, my nigga, I done done some shit. Real talk. You, didn't to, you didn't have to be there to do it. You go, okay, and you start trying to figure out, okay, so my shit is grow a dollar in a week. How can I get my shit to grow ten in a week? Because uh -huh. that and this is working at a dollar. Now I just got to get this shit to be a bigger amount. You know what I'm saying? And this is how you start thinking when you start seeing shit like that. You stop thinking like, okay, I'm trading motherfucking an hour for fifteen dollars. Now I'm make now I need to figure out how I can, you know what I'm saying, turn fifteen dollars in a minute. Exactly. Exactly. Let your money work for you instead of working for your money. Yeah man. And when I started figuring that type of shit out, man, life became like extremely breezy for me, man. Like it was no more stress when it comes to bills. You know, of course you're gonna have different personal shit going on, but like not no big issues like like I say, bills, motherfucking you can't pay for this. You can't go on a vacation. You just mad because you're in the house all summer. You can't send your kids to camp. Like, these are a lot of things that I dealt with as a kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, just we couldn't afford a lot of shit. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and that type of shit is what, like, really drove me to want to be, like, successful and be like, yo, my kid is not going to deal with this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit just a drag. Like, being in the house all summer watching fucking Jenny Jones. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Like, though. A lot of people say that, you know, money don't solve a lot of problems, but it gives you opportunities for a lot mm -hmm. of shit. Man, listen, Kanye said it best, man. Having money's not everything, but not having it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's e it's easy to say that shit, man. It's easy to say that shit when you got some money. Having money ain't everything. Shit, ask a motherfucker who ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ask, ask a motherfucker who ain't got nothing. I bet they be like, man, that should have changed my life right now. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's just that's just real shit. And that's and that's just just honesty, man. It sounds good in, in in retrospect, but in real life, it's that's not a true statement. <laughs> like, period. Yeah. And people swear, like, I'll talk with folks and they'll say, like, all the time, you know, that they don't care about money. Money ain't that big of a focus to them. And it's like, I mean, I understand that. But at the same time, do you understand the other stuff that comes with money? Like the other, okay, your schools is going to be dedicated or, excuse me, dictated by money. Uh, what car you can drive going to be dictated by money. Like how much time you got to spend with your significant other going to be dictated by money. Like all of these, all of these different things are going to be related and tied to money. So do you care about money? Yeah, if you care about all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, facts. Like, if you just out here, like, you know, living, like, like I say, on some hippie shit, right, you probably don't care about money. You might just want to smoke your joint and sit up under a tree and catch a breeze. Cool. Me, personally, <laughs> like, no, nah, I want to travel. You know what I'm saying? I want to buy nice things. I want to live in nice places. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, I just want a, a, a lifestyle that I feel like I'm worthy of, you know what I mean? And in order to get that lifestyle, I'm going to do what the fuck I got to do to get it. Hey. And all that take money. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, man. Like, also, you're going to grind to get that shit. And, and at the end of the day, you know, money is what make that shit go. Yep, for sure. Like you said, everybody got to get that 10,000 hours in, man. man but... You got to. You got to. Don't be trying to get no shortcuts, skipping over shit, any of that, because at the end of the day, you're going to end up losing, man. Like, the best the best teacher is experience. Like so go and put in your work, do your due diligence and, and, and learn from your mistakes. Just like that uh that uh quote, you can't Google Google experience. <laughs> no, you can't. It's so true, man. So mm -hmm. true. For sure. Well, Andre, bro, we're gonna pivot to the last segment of the show. We're gonna do what's on your timeline. So my brother, I wanna ask you what's something that you saw on social media that you just wanna talk about, man. Um I was just on my timeline earlier, and I saw something about um, the Trump rally. So a few of the people that's supposed to be working at the Trump rally, they got tested for COVID-19. <laughs> like, the people that's supposed to be working there, like ushers and stuff like that. So a couple of them got tested for COVID-19, and I think that's hilarious because he's been screaming and hollering how, you know, nobody around him, nobody on his team, any of that, you know what I mean? He just, like... Pretty much COVID-19 is just 
not associated with him and him and anybody who just going to vote for him is immune to COVID-19 pretty much. And I thought that was pretty funny, man. Um, the times that we're in right now, you got to find some type of humor in them. I don't, I don't feel like we should be taking this shit too serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course we should take our lives serious. Of course we should take certain things serious, but I feel like we should be able to find the humor in a lot of stuff with, with what's going on right now, especially if you're a, um, especially if you're a civil minded individual, you know what I mean? Like just be able to look at stuff and understand a lot of stuff is just really out of our personal control. You know what I mean? If we really want to have some control and and some power with this stuff, we got to know where to actually put our voices and our votes. And it starts with our community. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can be mad at Donald Trump. You can scream Donald Trump ain't shit this, Donald Trump ain't shit that, but you have to start in your community with, you know what I mean? Your aldermans and you know what I mean? Your local officials. And that's where your vote counts. And that's where your voice is going to be heard the most. And that goes up, you know what I mean? And once those guys get put into certain positions in certain offices, they'll grow, you know what I mean? And keep growing into the, it was almost like the Barack Obama effect, you know what I mean? But we just got to, you know what I mean? Put our voices and our votes behind the right individuals and people and stop just going to vote for the president and just stop saying we're not going to vote at all, you know? Yeah. Right. Definitely got to start making them votes count. Because that's going to be the way to change things. Get policy changes. You got to get people in there that represent your values, represent yep. what y'all, you know, your voice. Yeah, and people just don't understand that it start, like I say, with local community guys, like I say, like aldermans and people like that in your local community who can, like, you can walk into their office and you can speak to them directly about your problems and they'll try to help you directly and personally as opposed to you sending letters and writing emails to somebody or whoever that ain't going to see them or get them at all or even be thinking about helping you or your community. Mm. I love it. Um, and before we get off of here, my brother, can you tell the people where can they find you at if they want to tap in, get some more uh, information from you, if you have any type of products you got? Just, just oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram. That's uh, Renaissance125. Um, I'm launching an e commerce store soon where I will be offering an introduction to real estate course where I'm pretty much giving you guys all of the information and all of the knowledge that I've attained um, on my real estate journey over the last 10 years. Uh, I've worked for a broker, um, I've taken real estate agent courses. <clears throat> like I said, I've attained over $1.4 million in real estate. Um, so I'm a pretty seasoned guy when it comes to real estate, and I got a lot of good information for you guys. The course, um, will be about a four hour course with broken down into individual modules. And I think you guys will get a lot of information and a lot of value out of it. Um, in addition to that, I also have merchandise, um, on the uh, store and the site as well. And don't forget to shoot over to my YouTube channel to check out the show, the Renaissance report. It's a lot of free game on there. The Renaissance report is a show that I like to describe as like a business version of Saturday Night Live, you know what I mean, for black people, you know what I mean? I'm on there cracking jokes, giving information. We got skits, like, man, the whole nine. And it's like, it's for us, you know what I mean? It's funny, it's informative, it's entertaining, all of those awesome. awesome things. Yeah, so so go and check out the Renaissance Report. And, um, and uh, also, man, like, if you guys have any questions, like I say, go to my Instagram, send me a DM. Um, I'll give you whatever information you guys need about the NACA program. Of course, go to their website, NACA.com, and sign up for their webinars. They're doing webinars on the regular right now. If you feel like you're ready to step into multi-unit real estate investing, they give you multiple options, um, up to four units. You can do a three-unit with a storefront. You can do a condo. You can do a single-family home. Like I say, they give you multiple options to take advantage of no money down, low interest rate, all of the benefits that you can take advantage of when it comes to first time home buying and real estate. And that's NACA.com. And like I said, reach out to me at Renaissance125 and my DMs on Instagram. Hey, but well, I appreciate you, my brother. You came hey, on here. This was a great episode. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all doing some, some, some awesome shit out here. I'm glad that I came across y'all page. I'm glad that I tapped in with y'all the first time on that live. And since then, it's just been up. We've been good and we've been vibing and just, you know what I mean? Always good energy and sharing good information with each other. And I just really wanted to get this information out there to people through you guys, because I know a lot of people uh, listen to you guys' podcast. 
and um, follow you on Instagram. And I used to see like a ton of people really questioning if NACA was real and if the no money down option and all of these different things were real. And they and it and it very much so is real. I've taken full advantage of it. It's helped me, like I say, get started in my real estate journey and free me and my family up financially so I can go and start other businesses, invest in the stock market and do other things with my money that I typically would not have been able to do on the scale that I'm doing at if I had not started in real estate. So, man, please go and take advantage of that NACA program, y'all. Hey, if y'all don't, y'all ain't got no more excuses with the real estate game. My brother really came on here and dropped the gems on the damn NACA program. So y'all get with the NACA program. But all right, we're going we gonna to wrap this episode up. We're going to do a little hype, couple housekeeping items before we wrap up. Once again, Andre, bro, we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening week in and week out. We appreciate y'all listenership. Continue to share, like, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, Go to our website, blackwellrenaissance.com. Uh, check out our blogs. We've been dropping some real fire blogs lately yeah. on black businesses and business ownership and just different things that you can invest in. So definitely check that out. Uh, Jay? Um, I just want to say y'all be on the lookout for our 12-week program that we're about to have coming out. We're going to do a 12-week series, um, basically just showing you how the renaissance is going to work. And we coming through, we're going through Real estate, stocks, we're going to be talking about mentally. We're we talking about just wealth holistically. So y'all definitely be on the lookout for that. We're going to have the information up really, really soon. Um, but this is about to be a great time. It's going to be a limited amount of seats, only 100 seats. So y'all try to get into it. Jared, you got anything, my brother? No, nah, man, just y'all really... Um just reinforcing what he said, go check out NACA, bro. Like, uh, in Juneteenth was yesterday, mm -hmm. NACA was like brought into uh, creation by uh, a byproduct of redlining. Like people trying to make redlining or create equality from the misequality that had happened with redlining. Yeah, so like, yeah. you know, y'all go check that out, bro. It's a, it's a program made for you to help catch you up in home ownership. So, Okay, and, and the lick and the lick is like I told y'all, man. If you got a significant other and y'all plan on being together, man, do it. That's the that's the loophole in the whole thing. That's how you really take advantage of it and really create generational wealth for your family through NACA. I just gave y'all the game, so man, ain't man. no excuse. Yeah, <laughs> ain't no excuse. Up. It's no money down. The man told you all you gotta do is go get yourself in the right position and then take advantage of the program. Yeah, for sure. Well, y'all. On that note, this is Black Wolf Renaissance signing out. Peace. Peace. Hey, man. Hey. I got money on my mind. I'm just trying to get some dough. I ain't picking up my line.